Hello again, everyone. Once again, I'm your hostess, Corinne from Choose and One Studios, continuing on our Let's Play of Olivia 2. The reason I'm starting off on this screen is you can see I don't have nearly as much money as I had before, and my levels are back down to reasonable for this point in the game. Just wanted to show that off so there was no question. Also, Fumi is still a little ball of fluff. Sorry, Fooms! We'll get to you later when we have entirely too much cash. But for now, let's talk to everybody before we go. I'm going to go on a journey too when I grow up. Maybe you'll go on a journey of Pokémon! Hopefully not. Don't worry about the city. I'll protect it while you're gone. Good job you did protecting the city while I was here. Hopefully you, like, leveled up some. Clemento Village is just beyond the Southeast Tower. Yes, it is. Good old Clemento Village. It's good for you to travel when you're young. The experience turns into such splendid memories. I still seriously don't see the old in that sprite unless I squint. I wish that they were redheads. You were in the Clemento, weren't you? You could buy lovely things there. I wish I could go. I was being pestered by my cat until I sneezed. My cat is afraid of sneezes. If you fake them well enough, it runs away. I wasn't even faking, though. I really had to sneeze. Up here we have... Let me worry about Hilda. Can I worry you off to anyway? First to the Southeast Tower. I have to pass there on the way to Sundleton anyway. Only it's Clemento. The town where they invented Clamato. Or not. Good thing Hilda was okay. I agree, old dude. Do you have to go, guy? You're coming back soon, right? Probably not especially soon. Sorry, little girl. Hate to disappoint. So right now, we're going to head over to the tower, and once we're inside, I'm going to cut, because remember those treasure chests at the top of the tower we didn't get? Well, I want them. So, it'll, it's not really grinding, but I'm going to be killing everything on the way, it's going to be really boring. I'll meet you back here once I'm done. Alright, so I lied. I couldn't help it, it just looks too cool here. So, once we're up here, what do we get for our troubles? Fire dagger, not bad, not bad, not bad. What's in this chest? Camo armor, also not bad. And over here, pearl brace. Piece of equipment for each member of our party. Because who's gonna get what? Guy should always get the fire dagger. Nice boost all the way across the sky. I always give. Oh, <laughs> well, he'll get camo armor too. Armies by camo. Divine Cure restores HP of each party member of your party by 25% of user's max HP level. Since he has the highest max HP, as we can see, by far, no real reason not to. Fire Dagger, Dagger with the Flower of Fire. You get Blaze Attack, three times as effect more damage than your normal attack. Good against enemies that are afraid of fire. And, hey, it's Guy. He's super powerful. Give that to him, he'll be doing a lot more damage. Also, no equip and no equipping game. And the pearl brace. A bracelet made from pearls. Gives you light bulb. Increase your intelligence. Useful ability for Tia to be able to throw out in battle. Let's see, just to make sure. Power brace is actually a downgrade. Gives you the intelligence boost, but he doesn't really need that IP, so not really useful. Now I'm really going to clean this little floor. No point in you watching me just ram into an enemy and then they go as the enemy dies, so you'll see me after I get that done. Sweet, juicy revenge. Come here, you. Time for some guru box. Welcome back. Here we are again at the very beginning of the tower. Here we are once again with the arrows. Just ignore these guys and give them nearly enough experience to be worth slowing me down. Walk over these that were raised before. And we're on this side. That's really all. That is all that was keeping us back. So, moving on, here is the little town of Clemento. The South Tower was shaking. What happened? And we can't tell him. Doesn't really matter. Isn't this a pretty ring, ma'am? Yes, it's really lovely. Is this made of glass? Uh-huh, you can buy them in that shop. We're not talking to each other, though. Let's talk to her. Hello. Wow, that beautiful glass crafts. What beautiful blast grass. What beautiful glass crafts! Did you make all of these? No, my husband makes all the crafts. Really? Is he here today? No, he's off on a journey. He seeks beautiful things and turns them into glass. But he hasn't come back for such a long time. He's never been away this long before. I'm sorry, did I talk too much? Did you find anything you like? So at this point, we can 
IT an accessory if we want. None of them have any IP besides that, which gives confuse. They're not really worth the money, really, quite frankly. I mean, they're cute and all, but just not worth it. Nothing up here, just so you know. Sorry, we'll be back later. As you can guess, her husband is going to be important to us. Welcome to the Magic House. What spells you got for me? So, we can finally buy Escape for Tia, so we can escape from Labyrinths. We can buy Release to get rid of Paralysis without having to use a Shriek. Or not a Shriek. Um, bravery increases defense, which is always good. Some battles will really need that. And that's all. Don't really need a whole lot of magic to be thrown at us every single time we come to a new place, so not all important. Oh, one thing about magic that can be very useful. You can arrange your magic. It can be really helpful to have your spells laid out in a helpful order, such as by putting all of your weaker spells at the back, or by stacking your, most, your spells in ways you enjoy. I'll do that more later in the game, but right now we don't really have the spells that I care about. I can find them quick enough. Is that weird framing? Alright, I heard Jaffe used to study glass crafting on the East Continent a long time ago. The Ruby icon by Jaffe's teacher is now that company's na country's natural treasure. National treasure. Bleh. I'd learn how to speak English. Well, it'd be useful to do Let's Plays. Rachi owns a small shrine northwest of here, so you need permission to pass. So you're astonishingly telling me that one man controls all passage through... Oh my god, I hate that guy so much. Say, youngsters, have you heard the rumor about the Ruby Apple? seems the richest man in town wants the apple-shaped ruby in the cave north of here. You can find it, he'll buy it at a good price, and probably let you go through the damn shrine. Hint. So, let's see what stuff we can pick up here. For her, we can pick up a rod, which is good, because it does damage. No IP, but not everything needs IP. We get a couple of wood helmets. Helmets made from wood that don't do anything fancy. And Spellstruck, which is pretty good in the Red Beret. We'll lower her magic resistance, but that's probably fine. A couple of these don't hurt either. Ah! I'll just equip that when we get to the menu screen. Um, the baggy, loose-fitting clothing, which is kind of cool. As you can see, again, we're facing some cha choices of do you want IP or not, but that's perfectly fine. Just equip and max it. That would help it. And we'll go and see Rashi. I don't really like Rachi, as I already hinted. This was my first. We own all the houses in this village. The rent alone brings a tidy, us a tidy sum. Of course, there are some we don't pay on time. And we hate them, because we're shallow. I'm Rachi, the richest man in this village, who looks just like everyone else. I understand you are warriors. Have you ever gone to the North Cave? No, but why do you ask? Rumor has it there's an apple-shaped ruby there, but I can't get to it because of the monsters. I just have to have the ruby apple. If you happen to find it, would you sell it to me? Of course I will pay whatever you ask. I'm not stingy. I just know how to use money. Honey, that glass shop hasn't paid the rent yet. They're always late. What? Again? I told them one more delay and they're out. What shall we do? Let's see. Oops. Sweetheart, don't bring up such things in front of our guests. Why not? I don't say anything wrong with speaking the truth. Haha! <laughs> now isn't there something you should be doing about, about back, sweetness? Alright, alright. Excuse me, how embarrassing, ha ha ha. Amusingly, Clemento, Parslite, and Tanbul, Parslite we'll see after this video, were all made into one city. Rashi, in the remake, Rashi did not have a wife. He was much fatter and had a giant bronze statue made of himself. Or gold, it was monstrously hideous either way. In this version, he gets kind of... In that version, I guess he gets what he deserves, except for that he has a huge statue made of himself, which... We all know egotists just love giant statues themselves. And apparently dead presidents. Their ghosts haunt us if we don't build statues to them. Mount Rushmore was to quiet their rage. Don't you have in here yet? Yeah, okay. So, with that said, time for us to continue on to the Ruby Cave. Uh, that's what I call it, anyway. You can call it whatever you want. If you do want to grind up capsule monsters, this is the best place to do it for a while, as the enemies around here give you about 500 gold a pop. Oh, here's the small shrine to Parcelite. Belongs to Rashi from Clemento. You need his permission to pass. Sorry, unless you have permission, I can't let you pass. I'll catch you. So, yeah, once again, I need to learn the difference between Northwest and Northeast, which is funny, because I live in the Pacific Northwest, and no one ever shuts up about where we are. Oh, well. Oh, it is the Ruby Cave. Not that clever after all. So... 
Do you see what I see? That's right. First off, we have a new encounter. And this is with the Web Spider. There are still Mega Moths in this battle, but we really aren't too afraid of them. To be fair, we're not really too afraid of the Web Spiders. But the Mega Moths, we just want to take them out quick, because they can do the whole Flap Flap Dance. They can keep half my party asleep for a while. Thankfully, well, there's only one of them, and now there's four of us. Four things to focus. One thing I like to do at this point, have both Tia and Maxim attack one target, and Guy attack the other. They'll do about the same amount of damage overall, especially if Fumi decides to chime in for Guy, in case one of you gets a little extra hit. Guy also having a flame dagger is kind of unfair. Don't worry, we'll be back for you soon. Pretend that didn't hurt. Moving right along. Over here are the enemies that can give you the B-Rock if you really want to take that chance. Such low percentage, please don't do that to yourself. Well, let's take them on, just so I can show you what they're all about. As you can see, these are big bees, though they're tiny, and they're actually the smaller of the bee sprites. They have some nasty attacks, beyond just wiggling back and forth, such as multi-hit sting attacks, which can cause status effects from poison to paralysis, which can be very nasty if you're not prepared for them. However, they have low health, low normal attack, they need those status effects. But, before we go on, we're going to want to worry about getting that nice little friend we saw there. He's another capsule monster. Here's a bat. I think we get a new kind of bat. If so, you'll see it. If not, you won't. Yay, new kind of bat! So these are red bats. They're really not all that fierce, truth be told. You can have Tia to take out the smaller bats, because she can do it in one hit, and have Maxim and Guy double up on the big ones. They have a vampire health draining attack, but it doesn't have a very fancy animation. The bats can still summon allies, and oddly they tend to run away less from me at this point. You'd think they'd run away more seeing how much damage is being inflicted onto their bigger brethren. But no one ever said the AI in this game was smart. Now we have a V with some poison beetles, so you can see this fight too. Poison beetles, obviously, are beetles that have poisonous attacks. Kind of painful, and eh, not really all that bad, all things considered. Just enough of an increase to be able to justify recoloring them, I guess. Which is to say, not very. They obviously don't do very much damage, and they're just as smart about using their special attacks. Which is amazing, because if they were all using their special attacks... Oh, I forgot. Bees can summon companions. Not all enemies can, though it may seem like it from how many you've seen them do. There are a healthy amount of them. <sighs> Quit picking on Fumi. Since only things that survive get experience at the end of battle, if they're picking on the capsule monster and you want your capsule monster to level up, you might want to kill them a little bit faster, especially when they start defending instead of killing them. <sighs> poor, poor Fumi. Moving right along. Down here, we have a very simple puzzle. Turn all the switches to the left. However, they are interconnected in a complex way. Worry about that, but what I'd end up doing. is just flicking switches. They're connected, and it's true they are it is complicated and all, but I, there we go. Really just flick the switches, they don't really matter. Let me blow that up. Teleport. And we've got a nice little area we can walk around in. Hooray! More importantly, Capsule Monster Armor Dog joins the party. He's the Fire Elemental. Let's give him a name. His name would give it away too. Let's see here. You want me to name him Blaze, so I shall call him Flame. Flames. We'll keep the Z thing as a theme. So let's take a look at this Capsule Monster. You'll see his health is about 122, attack power is about 60, defense about 57. That's the only stats that really matter for this point in the game. The gut determines how long they'll stay, so that's important to about 100. His gut is significantly lower. It's only 41, but he's also quite a bit lo lower. He also has a lower health and attack and... Actually, no. Yeah, his attack and defense, however, are significantly greater. And he's about three levels lower. Armor Dog is a much better capsule monster in all respects. And in fact, we're going to take a quick moment to teleport out of here and get him boosted up. 
because while we may not have enough money right now to pump him all the way up to his final form, we do have enough money to be able to get him boosted up to his, well, his next form. And we haven't gone very far into the dungeon, because that's an offshoot on purpose. So, you'll meet me after I've gotten our new friend leveled up to his second form. You'll see right as the little sparks start twirling into him. See you then! And welcome back. Here we go, giving Flams the long knife. Armor Dog has become Winged Lion. Then he wants a Buster Sword, just like the other one. Figure so. With that in mind, let's take a look at the stat differences. So, now his attack is 90, as compared to 65, and his defense is 80. He still just has tail, but he can start learning new attacks at this form, and his gut has stayed, sadly, miserably about the same perfectly fine, he'll be our best capsule monster for a long time in terms of actual damage output. He will die or run faster than Fumi, which can be annoying, but sometimes he'll even start off battles just by killing everything in his sight, so I really don't see any reason to complain. So with that in mind, I'm going to teleport back over to Clemento, and you'll join me back inside of the Ruby Cave. See you after that! So, hello again, and here we are once again in the Ruby Cave. So let's not waste any time. We've got some enemies to take out, and a new capsule monster to show off, so even if this isn't a new encounter, you're getting to see it. Yeah, same old skeletons, but look at how much more imposing it is to have that winged lion on our team. It really should be more called a wyvern. But as you can see, even not doing a special attack, just using, uh, you know, I'm gonna vibrate, he does significantly more damage than Fumi did. Granted, I did level him up, but pretty soon he's going to get a fire elemental attack that can bathe the screen. There's Tail. Look at how much damage Tail does. It does more damage than Guy does at this level. It's unreal. It really, really is. Granted, I normally in my single player games will level him up to his next form at this point too, but that is a little bit grindy and overkill. And the next place is after, you know, that we'll do it, but that's only because we'll have so much money, it'll actually be affordable. From now on, though, unless it's a new battle, you won't be seeing it again, just like usual. Time to die, Skeleton! I just can't wait until Flams levels up to join the rest of us. He'll be doing crazy amounts of damage then. Remember, he's actually lower level than Guy and still doing that much damage. Kind of crazy, huh? But at least a B that gave us some experience. Once again, we have these bridge pieces we can pick up. And spot over there that we can't get to yet, but there's a bridge piece. Obviously, we'll be there soon enough. Let's go down this path first. And as you can see, throw the blue blocks into the lava. Hmm. Wonder why we might want to do that? Well, the answer is fairly obvious from just a simple, simple glance. Start off with throwing this one here. Ah, drat. I think I might not be able to get the secret one this way. But that's okay. We have the reset spell at our disposal. Oh, that's right. Look at this. Flame fruit. Flame fruit, as you guessed it, might be useful for our little doggy friend. But that's going to be important only after, well, we get him a little bit more leveled up. For now, there's actually some more goodies in that direction. We can't get to them unless we use the reset spell. But the reset spell is very useful. No need to fight these guys yet, as we can always just decide that whenever we want to. Only problem with carrying around a block is you can't use your skills. Which can be a little bit of a pain. At least you're trying to avoid fights, come on. Due to a challenge I want to take on, I don't want to be too overleveled, and yet this game is really challenging my patience with that. Oh, well. So, as tempting as it is to go over there, it's not worth it. We'll just shove this right there. I believe we have one more crystal we can get our hands on. Yep, there it is. Now, if you use this one carefully, you can get to both of those at once, which makes it so this is actually possible. Then we just go down to right here. 
we get the Fury Helmet. And the Aqua Whip. Oh, Aqua Whip. Yeah, I, that was loud. So we really didn't have to get the rod, but I get everything. Aqua Whip. Oh, Water Whip. Yeah. Three times more effective, yada yada yada. Regardless, it ups her attack by quite a decent amount. And as far as helmets go... Let's see. Fury Helmet. If you put this on, you'll get very angry. Menace. Reduces enemies attack power by one eight. So, let's see who gets this one. We'll give it to Max if he needs the stat increases compared to Guy, who massively outranks him. The game's even nice enough to give you this! So, we'll just... plonk this down there, but... not before... Let's see here, is there anything we need to do? Oh, right! There we go! That way, when we go down the other path, it'll actually work. Just duck down here for a second. Cut some grass... Take down some bats. And you go right up through here. For a little bit of a heal. And a save. Don't really need that save anymore. And let's see if there anything over here. I always get the feeling that there is, but that's what the game does to you. It should lower your guard. Or raise it. I don't even know how those things are supposed to work. But, we don't have the key, so currently we can't proceed. Oh, well. Soon enough, right? That'd be right. We should remember that that's where the final door is. Or the dungeon. This is the last of the main side quest dungeons early on in the game, meaning finally stuff stops interrupting the plot every 0.5 seconds, or not even having any plot, which is a good thing, I think. They spent a good amount of time making it so Maxim has a strongly created character, at least a reputation of being a hero. And now we have the Ruby Key. So that it's not surprising when, well, things start happening in the future. Let's take a look at that Ruby Key really quick. The Ruby Key. The key to the Ruby Cave. Yeah, I know, not really all that flashy. Moving right along. Ah, time to prune some skeletons. Just proceed right along, as now that we have the key, there's only one real thing that we need to go back and do. And we can do that afterwards. Eh. You know, actually, it's gonna bug me if we do that. So, really quickly, we're just going to go back to the very beginning of the cave, and do the path we didn't take, because I thought it was a bonus path, or a path that we'd meet up with naturally later. You might have guessed it. Eh, stay still right here. As otherwise, we can't ever use that door. And it's kind of nice to know what's behind every door, isn't it? At least with my runs. Another little switch there. We go down. And we're right here. So, nothing fancy per se, but as I said, completionist. So we'll go down here. We'll grab up one of these suckers. Head on across. Just because I've never wanted to look free healing in the mouth after we change one piece of equipment. Now the insect crush, as silly as that might sound, we're going to save up because we're going to be fighting the boss, which is, I'll admit, another one of the bosses that schooled me more times than I care to admit when I was younger. But I was really young, and this was my second RPG. Ruby Key! Maxim, look! The Ruby Apple! Haha! <laughs> More idiots fooled by the Ruby. Looks like my dinner has just arrived. That is a spider, look at it! Yep, that is a tarantula, to be precise. The reason we have the insect crush equipped, it does good damage against the suckers. Oh, right, because it's not him. So, I want to start off by doing a little bit of protection buffing. He already has Blaze Attack ready, which does a nice amount of damage, so he's going to use that. The both of us are going to make sure we stay alive a little bit longer by casting Bravery. Upping our defense by a nice healthy amount. Once, and then twice. As before, the second increase is pitiful. 
but Clams is already showing us that he cares about us. He's pretty sweet. Poison Shower also does quite a bit more damage if you don't have that nice little buff there beforehand. So, let's see here. We're just going to go for a little bit of... Let's see. Let's menace you a bit. Lowering his attack by 1 to 8. And... Now that we took a little bit of a hit there, let's fix that. Also, multi-aim healing does better in battle than it does on the map screen, or on the menu screen. Don't ask me why. He just lost 23 attack, and Flams ran away because he's homeless. That's fine. You want to keep those other enemies going, as they can still status effects. So Maxim's going to keep up with bomb attack, and Tia is going to drop some Gales. Gales is weakness. We'll go through the little spells if the game gives us time. No, it's not. Spiderweb is his nasty little spell. As if I remember correctly, it's status effect city. Oh, one of the web spiders are status effect city. Didn't remember that for some reason. But it's not really too much of a worry as Maybe status effects are. As you can see, we have Paralyzed Maxim, who's one of the two characters who has the ability to reverse cure, and... Yeah, a sleeping Tia. And we don't have either of the items that cure those status effects, so I could smack Tia. That might wake her up. But this guy, it also might kill her. We're just gonna focus on killing the web spider, and any companions that he gets, hoping that Tia wakes up. Guy being very slow is not a very good healer, but that was just the right time. So we're gonna throw out a frenzy, 1.5 times normal attack, and some strongs, healing us back up to decent health, doing a nice little bit of damage, and hopefully this spider's almost dead because he's really taken, really taken a pounding. I'm gonna cast release so that that status effect doesn't stay for very long. This has always been one of the fights that I've always remembered because it can be, well, kind of nasty. But I'm glad it's not going nearly as bad as it could. Let's see, let's throw down a flash and see if that's weakness. Oh right, it's immune to flash. Forgot that somehow. Surprised that no one's got poison, all these poison showers going around. Alright, let's see here. Increase agility during battle. Guy is very powerful, but his agility is very low. Just in case we get another spot where he's all alone again, I want his agility raised. I want our health back up. So we're gonna use strong with Tia. Always goes first, thankfully. Fake with Maxim to once again raise Guy's attack, or rather his speed. But this is where, you know, the spider's almost dead. He starts using stronger. Thankfully, he only heals himself for a little bit more than the damage that Guy can do. So as long as you keep up the pressure, he should die before we're too terribly long. Maybe he's just strong against magic. Yeah, that's this guy's gimmick. One of them. He's also just pretty darn strong. He's got status effects on his side, which never help. At least it means that Tia can, can offer support in this battle. But that was all he had to offer. You can get a jewel from him, by the way, the Spido jewel, but you can also get it somewhere else, and it's not worth refighting him over and over again. T levels up, and Flams doesn't get ran away. Stupid Flams. Maxim, the ruby! Was it broken in that battle? Wait a minute, Maxim. I thought the ruby was a pretty strong gem. Can't be so easily broken. What's going on? I have no idea. So... Yeah... Sigh. What? Who's this? Good heavens! I was caught by a monster and trapped here. I was about to be eaten, too. Why did you come to such a dangerous place? You don't appear to be an explorer or anything. I'm a gla glass craftsman. You see, I can't make a living just by making glass crafts. I really needed money during my trip, and heard there was an enormous treasure in this cave. So I came here, but as you can see, I got caught. Guess I'm not cut out for treasure hunting. I'd love to give you something for saving me. But I only have only this. Will you accept it? Th that is... I found this lovely red glass during my trip, so I made this out of it just for fun. I made two and sold one in the city. 
You seem to know about this. You're kidding. Wait a second. This, this is the glass apple I made. But why is this here? This is the treasure you were talking about. The ruby apple. What? Wait a minute, this is just glass. It's not a ruby. When you, was it you sold that glass apple? It started my journey a long time ago. I don't know how this god apple got here, but it became the treasure talk of the town. How is that possible, Jaffe? Who did you sell this glass apple to? To the rich guy, Narcissus. He treated me great when I told him I ran the glass shop in Clemento. And not other rich people, but this guy was really nice. Not like Rashi. We'll meet him later. In any case, we got the ruby apple. Let's go back and get the money from Rashi. But this isn't a ruby. It's just glass. Look at that apple closely. Can you tell the difference? That's right. We found the ruby apple in this cave. That's the truth. Maxim, I never thought you would say such a thing. It's okay, if Rachi thinks it's a real ruby, but well, there's no problem, right? If he believes it's a real ruby, it means it's worth that much. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what he says when he takes a look at this. Yeah, alright, let's go back to Clemento. I'll go back too. Thanks for everything. Can you go back by yourself alright? Yeah, and please take this apple. We got a ruby apple. I'll go back to the village. Thanks. And now that we have the escape spell, they're going to stop teleporting us out of everywhere. I wish we could take the extra one too, like Broken Ruby Apple. Keep get a bunch of them in New Game Plus and form the Ruby Continent. Something stupid like that. And the Ruby Apple? This looks at this. This looks like an apple-shaped ruby, but it's actually only glass. Not really so much of a problem. At least not to Maxim, who apparently has all the morals of a five-year-old. So we'll just escape out of here. No point in fighting our way back. And, because I'm feeling lazy, we'll choose a warp to get back to Clemento. And there we are! You found the ruby apple? Awesome! But we're gonna do something even more awesome. We don't know that, eh, she just says the same thing. Oh yes, this is it! The ruby apple! You did it! You found it! Thank you so much. This is to show my appreciation. Please, take it. Oh my, are you sure? This is a lot of money. Never mind, never mind. I don't hold back when it comes to quality. Ha ha ha! Also, I will talk to the keeper at the small shrine. You can pass any time. But that is... Tia. Well, we've got to go now. Is that really okay, Maxim? That's a lot of money. It just tells us how good Jaffe's work is, that's all. But don't worry about it, let's go. I have no control right now, by the way. Hello, Jaffe. Oh, it's you, Maxim. Yes, I want to give you this. What? Money? That's how much Rachi paid for your glass apple. But, but I gave you that apple. I can't accept this. It's alright. This money belongs to you. But, but, if it makes you feel any better, why not sell me this? The money will cover it, right? Maxim, thank you so much. Don't mention it. Well, we've got to go now. Maxim, you were planning to do this right from the start, weren't you? Well, yeah. By the way, here, Tia. Take it. You're giving it to me? Well, I can't wear it. Thank you, Maxim. What a lovely thing to do. She flips off adorably. Such a simple thing makes her so happy. She's like a little girl. Yeah, but I don't know if coming with me will make her happy. Well, that's something she'll decide, isn't it? I guess. Hey, Tia, we're leaving soon. I'm coming. So let's do our annual talk to everyone in town. When Jaffe comes back, I'm going to ask him to make me a new ring. Heard you save Jaffe. Heard Jaffe said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this town isn't really all that exciting, and it's always kind of felt like a speed bump. You finally learn the plot, you're chasing after it, and oh wait, that's right, this game doesn't want you to finish the plot too soon, it has to hit the 60 hour mark, or some arbitrary number. So let's hit the end, and after a quick rest, we're going to go to Parcelite, which I think where I'll end this recording session, after we get through the dungeon in Parcelite. It's a dungeon that I just absolutely hated as a kid, but now that I'm a little bit older, not nearly as bad. So I'm going to take a very brief little recording break, clear my throat, double check I have enough hard drive space, I'll be back with you on the way through that small shrine.